To hybridize the 121 oligonucleotides to the scaffold, we will first need to hydrate the provided oligos with nuclease-free water to achieve a total oligonucleotide concentration of 100 micromolar. You will want to add 10 microliters of nuclease-free water per nanomole of oligo. Next, we will create a mixture of the 119 unfunctionalized oligonucleotides. To help ensure that each scaffold has all of its oligos hybridized, we recommend putting the oligos in at a tenfold excess to the scaffold as having a large excess of biotinylated oligos would be both costly and problematic for on-rate experiments. The biotinylated oligonucleotides will only be put in at a fourfold excess to the scaffold. As all of the oligos are mixed in an equimolar fashion, adding 1.09 microliters of the 109 mixture is simply like adding 0.01 microliters of each of the 109 oligonucleotides at 100 micromolar. Mix the following in a tube, 10.9 microliters of 100 micromolar 109 backbone mix and 1.0 microliters of the 10 bar mixture. Mix the single stranded scaffold, unfunctionalized oligonucleotides and functionalized oligonucleotides in a PCR tube as follows. We will add five microliters of the 20 nanomolar linear single stranded M13 DNA we made in video one. To this, Add 1.19 microliters of the mixture of the 119 unfunctionalized oligonucleotides. This is essentially like adding 0.01 microliters of each of the oligos at 100 micromolar, giving a tenfold excess to the 5 microliters of 20 nanomolar scaffold. Then add 0.8 microliters of 1 micromolar biotinylated VAR mixture. This can be made by adding 98 microliters of nuclease-free water, to 2 microliters of the mixture of functionalized VAR4 and VAR8 oligos. This is essentially like adding 0.04 microliters of each of the biotinylated VARs at 100 micromolar, thus giving a fourfold excess compared to the scaffold. Finally, add 0.22 microliters of 10x NE buffer 2. Pipette to mix thoroughly. Place this mixture in a thermocycler and subject it to the following protocol. Heat the sample to 90 degrees C. Then cool the sample at 1 degree C per minute until it reaches 20 degrees C. If non-thermostable custom functionalized oligos are being used, these oligos should not be added to the mixture until after the mixture has reached a temperature compatible with the functionalized oligos. For your convenience, you may want to set the thermocycler to hold at 4 degrees C after completion. By using polyethylene glycol, or PEG, we can precipitate out large pieces of DNA, such as the scaffold, while smaller pieces of DNA, such as the oligonucleotides, will remain in the supernatant. This is not necessary for the biotin streptavidin experiments, but may be useful for custom applications. Note that the precipitation efficiency is very sensitive to the concentration of PEG, so it helps to make a large stock of PEG that you can calibrate so that you do not have to calibrate your concentration every time you make a new PEG stock. Start with a 30% by weight stock of 8K polyethylene glycol. As mentioned previously, the efficiency is very sensitive to PEG concentration. Thus the following percentages may not work for you, and you may have to tweak the percentages for your 30% stock. First, we make a 4.75% PEG in 30 millimolar magnesium chloride. This is at a higher concentration than we want, so that when mixed with the 40 microliters of DNA, the final PEG concentration will be roughly 3.5%. To make this PEG solution, mix the following. 38 microliters of 30% PEG stock, 24 microliters of 300 millimolar magnesium chloride, and 178 microliters of nuclease-free water. To make a 3.5% PEG solution in 30 millimolar magnesium chloride, mix the following. 28 microliters of 30% PEG stock, 24 microliters of the 300 millimolar magnesium chloride, and 188 microliters of nuclease-free water. Dilute your hybridized construct to 40 microliters in 300 millimolar magnesium chloride in a DNA lobine tube. For example, if you have 8 microliters of hybridized DNA oligo mixture, then to this mix you should add 4 microliters of 300 millimolar magnesium chloride, and 28 microliters of nuclease-free water. To perform the PEG precipitation, add 115 microliters of the 4.75% PEG stock and mix thoroughly. 
Centrifuge at 16,000 RPM for 30 minutes at room temperature. Then carefully remove the top 145 microliters. This should be done very carefully, as it is easy to disturb the pellet. It should take roughly 30 seconds to slowly pipette out the supernatant in one smooth draw. It helps to constantly be pipetting near the fluid air boundary, as to be as far away from the pellet as possible. To the remaining 10 microliters, add 115 microliters of 3.5% PEG and mix thoroughly. Centrifuge at 16,000 RPM for 30 minutes at room temperature. After centrifugation is complete, carefully remove the top 115 microliters. Again, this should be done very carefully. To the remaining 10 microliters, add 115 microliters of the 3.5% PEG and mix thoroughly. Centrifuge again at 16,000 RPM for 30 minutes at room temperature and carefully remove the top 115 microliters. The remaining 10 microliters should have the hybridized DNA scaffold free of any detectable amount of free-floating oligonucleotides. This construct is now ready for use in on-rate experiments.